Hey everybody, my name is Andy Kager and I'm the co-writer and director of Rosie O. This film was my senior thesis project at the Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. The short film follows a young girl around her unwelcoming neighborhood. She's looking for her lost dog, Rosie. Um, so if you could just take this flyer and um, try to find her. Yes! So pulling off an eight and a half minute one shot short required a big team with lots of planning and creative problem solving. The first move we made was in renting a house for six weeks leading up to the production. This house and the surrounding neighborhood would serve as our shooting location and base camp. So it started as an empty house with tan walls, transformed into the colorful and cluttered home that you see in the film. The crew painted the walls, moved in furniture, and carefully placed objects around the house that were meant to be equally important to the film as the story and characters themselves. The crew was able to do countless tests and troubleshoots before the shoot. Every crew member spent a few days on location before we actually began filming, and we really needed that time together uh, to figure out how we were going to pull this film off, both creatively and logistically. So we shot in February of 2016 with three rehearsal days and two shoot days. During rehearsals, we practiced the camera move, blocked out where Maddie and all the extras were going to be. We did numerous tests on how to stitch the shots together. The momentum might be more important than the, the line. We did some cosmetic tests, some lighting changes. We basically thoroughly practiced every aspect of the film before we rolled the camera for real. Since it was such a high pressure shoot, we couldn't have any of these little things go wrong. You take the dog from her okay. and give her the picture, okay. and then you walk this way. Just okay. Yeah. Okay. We captured the exterior shots on one day, and the interior shots the next. So there were two shots each day, four total, all stitched together in post-production to create the one-shot short film. Behind the doors in the home, we set up an editing bay and camera room. And the other room staged gear and equipment. On day one, the team shot a series of takes. Then we brought the footage into our editing bay to review together. We decided right there on set, yes, this is the shot, this is our movie, let's move on to the next shot. Day two, we huddled together in the room watching a live feed of the action. Again, choosing our takes right there on set so that at the end of a weekend of shooting, we walked away with an edited movie. What was left was to stitch the shots together, color correct, and sound design the film. We lined both sides of the street with specifically placed vehicles. Getting some of them from used car dealerships, borrowing from friends, or just pulling over on the side of the road and leaving a note on a cool car. The film was shot entirely on a Steadicam, which was flying the camera in low mode, meaning the camera was actually upside down during the shoot and the footage was flipped 180 in post. Are we going on low mode? Yeah, we're going low mode. The whole day? All day, low, low mode. mode sure. I think I want every shot to be in low mode. Our idea was that the camera would never rise above Amber's eye level. So we would experience the whole story from a low vantage point on an 18 millimeter wide angle lens creating a surreal effect where the world feels big and intimidating. An extensive casting process led us to Maddie Dixon Poirier, a talented young actress from Calgary, Alberta. Maddie immediately fell in love with the film and we immediately fell in love with her. Hi, my name is Maddie Dixon Poirier. I am 10 years old and I'm with the Characters Agency. I'm four foot five and I live in Calgary, Alberta. She was perfect. Maddie won Best Lead Child Actress at the Joey Awards for her performance in Rosie O. I had the best day ever, Mom! Excellent! This is my new favorite project! 
Towards the end of the film, the camera seems to float over a handrail in front of the house. To pull this effect off, we actually cut off part of the railing to be easily detached and reinstalled. Then we set up a ramp for the Steadicam operator to walk down. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. So in the shot, there are several crew members behind the scenes that remove the gate, run the ramp and sandbags to the side of the house, place the gate back where it was, and hide behind the bushes, so in that way, when the camera turns back around, the house is completely in place. Just another thing that required a lot of rehearsing. And teamwork. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm a director that's based in Los Angeles, and if you want to check out any of my other work or get in touch with me, please visit my website. It's www.andykager.com. Thanks.